Welcome to Public Health Matters, where we talk about matters of public health. I'm Bobby Bagley, Chief Public Health Official and Director for the City of Nashville's Division of Public Health and Community Services. And I have with me today two of the Lion Club members, Nashua Lions Club. I have Aaron Hendrickson and Christine Kearns, who are members of our Nashua Lions Club. And we're going to talk about all things related to the Nashua Lions Club. And so we're going to start off, Aaron, with you, because you are the lion. So can you talk a little bit about what that means and tell us about the Lions Club and why did you decide to become a member? Absolutely. So I'm currently the president of the club, which is nicknamed the King Lion. Um, and I became a lion about 11 years ago when I moved back to Nashua. I was born and raised here. Um, and Ed Leishus asked me, um, he saw me at, uh, at a bright spot and was like, do you want to join the club? And I said, I'll give it a try. And um, ever since then, I've just loved being involved in the community and giving back to a place that is near and dear to my heart. Awesome. All right. And Christine, why are you a part of the Lions Club? I am a part of the Lions Club because I uh, am a hairdresser and a few of my clients are Lions and they kept asking me, uh, to join the club and I was currently working and then I stopped doing hair due to a shoulder injury and I wanted to volunteer my time and help out the community and I like the Lions Club because it's different you don't have to do every event but there's some that interest me so it worked out really well yeah and, and um, Ed Leishas is a great recruiter for the Lions Club that is correct right and he's been um, King Lion for a while and in fact I do believe that the, it's not a mantle. Uh, what is it called when you're transferring the king leadership over to the next king? Oh, the gavel. The gavel. Yeah. The yeah. gavel, yeah. yeah. So tell us a little bit more about what is the, um, what's the purpose and the focus of our National Alliance Club? Because I know it's actually international as well. Correct. Um, and it's huge and there's large memberships. So talk a little bit more about that and what does that look like here in New Hampshire? Right, so currently um, international, worldwide, there's 1.4 million members. Um, in New Hampshire, we are you know, doing our best with, with increasing our membership numbers. Um, the National Alliance Club has around 92 members. Um, we're hoping for 100 because we are still celebrating our 100 years. And so um, the more people that we can get to join, the better. Um, and so what we're focused on with the National Alliance Club is first and foremost community. Um, everybody in the club has a tie to Nashua in some way. They may not live in the community, but they either grew up here or they live in a neighboring town. Um, and so we focus on giving back to local um, charities and things like that. On the worldwide stage, there are uh, pillars of, of lionism that we focus on. Mm -hmm. So uh, they are hunger, uh, environment, diabetes, um, and then sight, and um, I'm going to forget the last one. Mm -hmm. um, but that's why, so we in, at the National Alliance Club, one of our main focus is to um, do at least one service project or fundraiser mm -hmm. in each of the pillars of lionism because we feel it's important to not only give back to our community but also stay um, current with what the Lions Club is doing internationally. Yeah. And so folks might be wondering, so this is the Public Health Matters, how does what the International or even our National Alliance Club relate to public health? But just those five pillars that you mentioned are all things that are focused on community for one, community yes. engagement, mm -hmm. supporting mm -hmm. our community organizations that provide services to uh, help some of our most vulnerable population. And when we talk about some of those gaps that need to be filled with vision, I know that we have some Lion Club members that actually do the vision screening for some of, in some of our schools, um, in some of our um, community centers, like the Adult Learning Center, also our Arlington Street Community Center, where they've gone in and they've done the vision screening, and they actually give eyeglasses to those who actually need them. And we actually collect the eyeglasses. Yes. And so I know Erin used to be the person that used to collect at one time, but I know now we have um, Liz who's doing that, who's Correct. in charge of that. Yes. But I think, did you used to do that at one I've, point? I've done parts of it, yes, yes. for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, yeah, so the eye screening is really our 
bread and butter of our organization um, because it, our mission is um, from Helen Keller mm -hmm. to be Knights of the Blind. And so we really focus on that. And so we have a committee that goes into the national school system and the other community organizations and does free eye screenings. And what that means is that they, a student, a child will find out whether or not they have a, a vision issue that mm -hmm. they need to have further investigated. And so then we will help fund their appointment and if they need glasses. So it's all, they don't need to worry about a thing. Um, if we find something, we follow up and they're, they're set. Yep, and that's awesome. And so there mm -hmm. are collection boxes that are in different businesses. We actually have one at the public health department. Again, how does this fit into public health? Because of the things that are um, prioritized or that are values that the National Alliance Club has, they align with what we do in mm -hmm. public health services mm -hmm. as well. And there's a huge community focus. And um, Christine, I'm gonna have you talk a little bit more about uh, more volunteers in the community focus and some of the different events that we've had. But in different locations, those boxes are there. So for uh, folks, when you have lenses, um, frames, uh, drop those off in those boxes and someone will pick them up and they do get used by um, individuals in the community, particularly kids that need to have eyeglasses. Mm -hmm. Those frames get reused. So that's yes. an awesome thing. So tell us a little bit more about what things people can get involved in if they become volunteers as a part of our National Lions Club? Um, I think, oh. <laughs> What are you involved in? Well, I, I've only been a member since October, and so far I've done the Warren Miller Ski, which Erin would know more what those funds go to. Mm -hmm. I'm, not, I'm honestly not sure. It was one of my first events. Yeah. And I was next to Erin, which was great because she's the King Lion, so I kind of just King saw. King Lion. I just saw, you know, um, you know how to how these events went. Mm -hmm. uh, Kamal, um, I've known him for years, and um, I just. I'm I think for words. <laughs> Help me, Erin. <laughs> there's, there's many different things, and I think that we've t we talk about this a lot as Lions. Is um, you give what you can. Right. And so we do many different things as an organization and cover many different areas of interest of our members. And so, for example, the Warren Miller that Kristen mentioned is um, an extreme ski movie that we screen. Mm -hmm. And um, all, all the proceeds go back to the National Lions Club. We have a oh. raffle, we do a 50-50 raffle, and it's really just a family fun event yeah. um, yes. that if you're a skier, this is like the be all end all every year. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so we took that project on um, and it's grown over the years. And while the funding um, just goes back to the National Alliance Club, it then gets dispersed throughout mm -hmm. the community. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's really important in, um, for us is that we want to be able to raise money to just immediately give it back out. Right. Um, and so we, one of the fundraisers that we do is to help the senior center, National Senior Center. We do a breakfast with Santa, um, and so those dollars raised for that go directly to the senior center, and we um, we staff it. We do all of the things, um, and so we just want to make sure that we are seen out in the community and. Um, people know that there's various ways to get involved. So another thing that we are doing that's coming up on June 10th is the um, golf tournament. And so we do, like, we have golfers in the club and they wanted to do a tournament, so let's do it. And right, so right. Um, that's the kind of the mentality that we have as, as a club is, what are you interested in? Let's see what the community needs. How can we give back? Right. And then we also have community presentations. And so I just said we, so I'm just out of myself as well. <laughs> so through at Leashes, I was invited to be uh, a member of our National Alliance Club. And um, one of the ways that we connected was um, during COVID, there was a lot of huge community response mm -hmm. to protect, preserve, you know, and to promote the health of the public. And that involved like, everyone, first mm -hmm. responders, national fire, police, public health, you know, our hospitals, um, our schools, everyone worked really, really well together. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the things that came out of it was the recognition of all of that effort that was, um, you know, put up by our national public health department. And so we became one of the um, awardees 
um, of the National Lions Club. And so now there is an annual uh, individual from the National Public Health Department that's recognized by our National Lions Club, which I so appreciate because the work that we do sometimes um, is so invisible, right? You don't know that there's a public health problem mm -hmm. unless it gets really, really big like COVID. Yes. Other than that, we do things sort of like behind the scenes, right. almost mm -hmm. like our Lions Club, with the events and things that are done, they seem to be like they're a little bit behind the scene, like the collective of the glasses, like who knows that you know we're doing that. But now a lot of people are gonna <laughs> know about it because you're talking about it. And so we want people to drop their lenses off or their frames off in some of those boxes and to know more about what we do at the Lions Club. But there are other awards that are given out as well. Yeah. And so who are some of the other awardee recipients that have been acknowledged? So we do various awards throughout the year. Like you said, um, with the public health, we also do the Department of Public Works, yes. um, Nashua Fire, Nashua um, Police, uh, EMT of the Year. Right. Um, we also have Teacher of the Year. And so we try to uh, represent and acknowledge all the hard work that's done throughout the community. Um, we started the Teacher of the Year a number of years ago um, because we realized a bunch of the uh, members of our club were former teachers. Mm -hmm. um, and so we thought it was important to recognize the effort and the work that they've given to the community throughout their careers and then recognize current, uh, current teachers. Yeah. And that's awesome because everyone deserves mm -hmm. recognition for the work that they do. And again, some of it is sort of behind the scenes and some people just do it because it's what they love, right? Mm -hmm. Just like with our, our National Alliance Club members. So I'm going to go back to membership again because a, a real key thing is to continue, you know, to grow that membership. So Erin, mm -hmm. you mentioned that we're at 92 and we want to get to 100 because we are, we are celebrating our 100th year. And so we also want to encourage folks as they're listening to find reasons why they might want to be a lion. And so, Kristen, you talked about the fact that it does, there's not a big ask, right? And so, no, which I, you can pick and choose. And listening to Erin now, um, I own a hair salon in the Front Door Agency, which is a wonderful place in Nashua, who I donate every year as my business. But then it, the Lions Club also donates. So the money raised at these fundraisers, like the Warren Miller or whatever, then we, when the front door turns around and asks the Lions mm -hmm. Club for help, then we're able to do that. Right. And we're able to contribute to this wonderful organization and all the other ones that need the help, like National Soup Kitchen, right, mm -hmm. or whatever. Yeah. But I think if you are retired or, I think it's the best thing to give your time, what time you, excuse me, can give. Mm -hmm. And I like the Lions Club because, yes, they have meetings every other week. Do you have to attend all of them? No, you go when you can. You sign up for the events that interest you or don't interest you, but it's something that you would want to do or help. Like, I haven't skied since I was 20, but I loved being at the Warren Miller event and handing out the goodie bags and seeing the families coming in and help us raise money for the community. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. And then there's the senior breakfast or the, what do we call it? The Santa? Breakfast, breakfast with Santa. Santa. Breakfast with Santa. Yes. And there's yes. also, aren't there competitions with food at the breakfast with Santa? Are there um, different dishes that are served? Like tell, tell us a little bit more about that. Sometimes we do a gingerbread making, house bring, making contest yes. for the children, um, which is always just lovely to see how excited they get um, mm -hmm. to, to just be doing something around the holidays right. um, and it's just a really great opportunity for the cross-section of the community to come together right. and be dining yes. together yes. and yes. food brings people together and um, this is a perfect example of how we do that. Right. Now there's another inaugural event that's coming up that I'm really excited about because as you said Kristen there are things that folks will get involved with because they love it like I'm not a skier. Mm -hmm. I've been there done that tried that. Um, that was fun. But <laughs> It was fun not when I outdoor. was 20, but yeah. not now. <laughs> not an outdoor wintery person. No. But, but here in New and England and Bobby. New Hampshire, yes. that is big for some. So that's going to be a draw for people who like to ski. Absolutely. And then there's the golf, right? So there's a the golf tournament for people who like to golf. Again, not one of my things. But this, this inaugural time event that's do. coming up is yes. like one of my things. So let's talk a little bit more about that. Because, again, it relates to the health community coming together. But it's also about a very important health issue. So let's talk a little bit about the inaugural event that's coming up. Right. 
So our inaugural event is uh, called Making Strides Against Diabetes, and so it's to um, raise awareness and money for the American Diabetes Association. Um, and as I mentioned, diabetes is one of the pillars of lionism, and so one of our members, Liz, uh, came to me and said, can we do a, a, a race and, and try it out? And so, and that's the beauty of the club is that we do have a handful of runners and walkers in the club who are very passionate about the, the sport. And so we're, we, we're, we're giving it a try. Um, yeah. And who doesn't love to go for a run or a walk in Mind Falls? I right. mean, it's just, it really is the best place uh, mm -hmm. in the area to go. So we just decided that we would um, put this together and see how it would go the first time and just bring the community together and um, also show what lionism is all about. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I hope that people who attend the event are able to see is just how much we care and how much we want to give back. And so um, I think that this is just a, a perfect way to, to show some of the work that we do. Right, and then again, collect money for a very important cause because diabetes in the United States is still one of these chronic illnesses that leads to cardiovascular diseases, leads to strokes, and so this awareness or this campaign gives us an opportunity to create more awareness um, and again, bring families and community together. So mm -hmm. walkers, runners, uh, baby stroller pushers, um, kids it, right? on their bikes, <laughs> exactly. kids in wagons, you know, we wanna mm -hmm. see everyone come out, um, you know, to really demonstrate like the power of lionism but also the power of community coming together for a really important mm -hmm. health, uh, chronic disease and health event to help create more awareness as well. Yes. And so what are some of the things that we can expect? So, and this is gonna be something that we're gonna do annually, so. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so if you don't get to walk this we're year. We're kicking it off with this we're one. We're hoping that people will show up yes. and walk this year or run. Yes. And then join us every year afterwards. Yes. We're hoping it will just grow from this point on. <laughs> yes, yes. So we're expecting for businesses that we, we want sponsors. So from we want sponsorships, um, and that gives businesses an opportunity to um, also get out in the community and be a part of like our registration area and get information about their businesses out. Um, and our main focus for this inaugural race is not we say race, run, walk, um, it's it's really just fun. Right. That is the main point. And so um, while some of us are more competitive runners than others, it's really just to get out there and show what you know 30 minutes of exercise can do for you. Mm -hmm. um, and we just, we think that it's important to raise awareness for diabetes, but also allow other community organizations to come together to promote what they what they do in the community. Yeah, mm -hmm. which is gonna be awesome. Mm -hmm. So we're looking for, if you haven't signed up to be a sponsor yet, there will be an opportunity for you to do so. We'll share some information and there will be a QR code that you can scan either mm -hmm. as a sponsor, and as a sponsor, folks don't necessarily have to be there, but we want you to come. Mm -hmm. Or people can just register to walk or run, mm -hmm. um, or just be there with a friend, you know, come and mm -hmm. again, um, we're going to be in Mines Falls, which is awesome. So we're highlighting another special place in the community. Mm -hmm. um, and the goal of this, we may call it our inaugural event to get people to come out and walk. But we want people to walk even um, beyond, you know, the date of this event. Right. We want people to Absolutely. just get out and, just, yeah, and, and walk because that's one of the ways that physical activity mm -hmm. is one of the ways that you can help um, keep diabetes under control because exercise is important for that as well as nutrition drinking plenty of fluid so mm -hmm. we're going to have some like little uh snacks out there as well healthy yes. snacks healthy <laughs> water snacks. so yes. we're going to be Waters. modeling yes we're going to be modeling yes. certain behaviors that we want our uh, community members to continue but just again do mm -hmm. this great opportunity for everyone to come together and for the line. So we're going to be there in full force yes, as, as lines, right? Are. And that's one of the reasons why we decided to have it in May, um, to your point, Bobby, is to allow people to get excited about the warmer weather, yeah. explore Mine Falls. If you've never been, this is a great, great opportunity, opportunity to, yeah. to go and, and be able to follow somebody so you know where you're going um, and just see the beauty of the park. And so um, we hope that this is not just an inaugural kickoff for the Lions Club event. We hope it really 
spark some interest in getting out and moving. Right. Getting out and moving. Taking those strides, yeah. right? Exactly. No matter how you do it. Exactly. Walk, run, push a stroller, pull a wagon, right? Mm -hmm. We just want folks out there. Now, can people bring dogs? Can people bring their pets? Yeah, I mean, it's it's in my Outdoors. balls. Outdoors. So, yeah. um, you just want people to pick up. Yes, yes exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Bring your little bag so you can pick up if you bring your Because, I mean, as Natural Lions, we do participate in the Mind Falls cleanup events as well. Um, but the more you can do when you're just in the enjoying the park is great as well. Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So tell us more about the Lions Club because there's also opportunities. Like there was a big event down in um, Boston I didn't get a chance to go to. So tell us a little bit more about some of these other events that we um, do with other, if you want to say, clubs. Sure. Um, so the event that happened in Boston uh, this past summer was uh, the Lions Club International International Convention. I heard and it was huge. It was huge. There were a lot of people, and it was so great to see everybody coming from literally around the world. Yeah. Um, and it involved like learning opportunities for like how to run your club while also social opportunities to get to know other members of clubs that um, aren't that are you know are across the world and see and find out it's kind of like information sharing to see what kinds of projects people are doing um, in other areas and uh, there also was the um, the parade of nations and so we went out and marched um, in the parade as New Hampshire um, we won best float. Um, Get so out! Very, very good. Um, <laughs> awesome. It was pretty great, and so um, it gave us an opportunity to to show the world what we what we do yeah. as lions. Yeah, that's amazing. Wow! So, so New Hampshire's Lions Club won the best float. Correct. Out of international. Correct. I mean, we did have like, <laughs> the the luxury of being just the the stayed over from Boston, right, um, right. but it it was that just is, fun. That is that's amazing. amazing for New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. Like we're a small state, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. that's amazing for New Hampshire to it be recognized in that way because of the Lions Club. What else do you want our viewers to know about um, the National Lions Club? I. I personally, when I joined the Lions Club, I, the first event was a Marguerite's Place in Nashua. Um, Liz, who arranged, started the diabetes, the one for this uh, May 19th, asked if I would help and contribute a ham, so I did, but I unfortunately got COVID, so I had to email everybody. And what I liked is a couple of the Lions members who I had never even personally met reached out to me, if you need anything at all, I think that Lions, we're such a tight community and mm -hmm. we help each other out. That is, to me, is amazing. Yeah. I had been a lion a month and a half mm -hmm. and I had all these people reaching out to, to me. I was like, I love it. That's community, And it gave right? me new yeah. friends that mm -hmm. I can count on. Right. And we can band together and help other people. That's the best part about being a lion to me. Right, yes. Helping build that community of resilience. Yes, and it's meeting new people and just knowing you're doing good for the community. I that that my heart's in it. I love it. Yes. So King Lion Aaron. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I don't mean to take the stage from you. I've only been a lion six no, months, no, no. but I love right. it. No, but that's awesome though because again, exactly. as a new lion, it just mm -hmm. shows you know how this meets even some of your own personal values because when mm -hmm. you join either boards or committees or advisory mm -hmm. groups. You know, you do that because there's something that aligns with your own personal values. And so exactly. there's something for everyone mm -hmm. that wants to be a part of the Lion mm -hmm. Club, right. right? And so mm -hmm. I like saying that. So King Lion <laughs> Aaron, <laughs> talk a little bit about like who is who is a lion? So our Lions Club is um, made up of various uh, men and women in the community who are as young as 25 and as old as 90. Mm -hmm. And so we really like to, to encourage younger people to join the club um, and and give what they can because um, this is that understanding. Some people think that the Lions Club is just for retirees, but it's not. You give the time that you have. And so um, I'm well in the middle of my professional career and enjoying being a member of the club. And so we have people from local businesses mm -hmm. who come who are members. Um, 
and so that gives them an opportunity to get to know each other a little bit more and, and there's a lot of networking opportunity as well for especially for the younger members um, to get to know, you know we have a lot of, of people in the club who have been very successful in Nashua mm -hmm. and so um, it's an opportunity to to get to know them and to Kristen's point like everybody just becomes friends right. it's just mm -hmm. it's really is a lion has your back and um, I like that I love that <laughs> so um, it's it's like it's been great that we've gotten to all know each other and mm -hmm. and through this organization where we most likely wouldn't have met otherwise right. and so yeah, exactly. but now I can call all 90 other 90 other members mm -hmm. of the club my friends right. Right, exactly. So there are school teachers, college educators, um, there's nurses, there's doctors, uh, firefighters, police officers, um, various small business, business owners. Th yeah, small business owners. Yes. Um, I'm trying to think as I'm looking around the room. Yeah, so exactly. I'm going around the room. So there's um, folks that represent all different types of um, sectors of, mm -hmm. of work and professions. And then there are folks that are just people from the community and that's again so Absolutely. people feel comfortable you don't have to feel like you fit into any it's mm -hmm. all doctors it's all nurses it's all fire you don't have to fit into one you particular don't. sector mm -mm. Yeah. Um, exactly. but again it represents it's very community representative right and so that's exactly. what we want to really um you know, emphasize with being a, mm -hmm. a line. And I love it that a lion's got your back. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And where there's a need, there's, there's a lion. lion. Yeah. Exactly. That is my favorite phrase ever. Yeah. Oh, you know, my favorite is the toes. Oh, the, oh, the yes. toes. Yes. Let's yes. do the toes. <laughs> not above not you. Not above you. Not, not beneath, beneath you. you but but right with you. you. Yes. And that's, and I've actually seen that done someplace else. I'm like, oh, that's the lion's <laughs> toes. <laughs> that's the lion's toes, right? Exactly. So that, and it allows for us to see that we have um, you know, just that we create that atmosphere of inclusiveness as mm -hmm, well, because mm -hmm. that's how communities need to be. And that's how we build resilience in our community as well. So exactly. I'm just going to have you repeat just our five pillars again as we start to like wind down Great. so that our viewers that are part of uh, the Nashua community understand that this is something that is for them. Right. So um, obviously diabetes is what we are here to um, to talk about our inaugural event, but then also uh, sight, hunger, environment, and childhood cancer. Yes. And we make sure that we do something for all of those. Absolutely. Thank you so much for being here today. I really appreciate for having my us. lion <laughs> partners <laughs> and members of the club being here to talk about what matters in public health because each one of those five pillars also represents the things that we focus on in public health. And so um, when I first looked at the mission of the Lions Club and even looked at the international level, I'm like, this aligns so much with the values that we have in public health. So I'm very um, honored to be a member of the National Lions Club because of what it represents. So thank you. So I'm Bobby Badley reminding you to have a great day today and a better day tomorrow. And we'll see you the next time on Public Health Matters.